live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's the Cube covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. And we're back. I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host, John Troyer, getting to the end of day two of three days of coverage here at the OpenStack Summit in Boston. Happy to welcome to the program Sujal Das, who is the Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer at Netronome. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, so we're, we're getting through it. Uh, you know, really John and I have been digging into, you know, really where OpenStack is, we're talking to real people, deploying real clouds, where it fits into the multi-cloud world. Um, you know, networking is, is one of those things that, you know, took a little while to kind of bake out. Uh, you know, it seems like every year we talk about Neutron and, you know, all the pieces that are there. But uh, to talk to us, Netronome, you know, you guys make smart NICs. Uh, you've got, obviously, some hardware involved when you hear a NIC, and you've got software. What, what's your involvement in OpenStack, and uh, what sort of things are you doing at, here at the show? Absolutely, thanks too. So uh, we uh, we do smart NIC platforms. So this includes both hardware and software that can be used in commercial off-the-shelf servers. Um, so with respect to OpenStack, I think uh, the whole idea of SDN with OpenStack is centered around the data plane that runs on the server. Things such as the Open vSwitch or virtual router, and there are evolving new data planes uh, coming into the market. So we offload and accelerate the data plane in our SmartNICs. Uh, because the SmartNICs are programmable, we can evolve the feature set very very quickly. So in fact, we have software releases that come out every six months that keep up to speed with OpenStack releases and OpenV switches. So that's what we do in terms of uh, providing uh, a higher performance OpenStack environment, so to say. Yeah, so I, I spent a good part of my career working on that part of the, the, the stack, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and the balance was always like, right, what do you build into the hardware? Do we have accelerators? Is this the software that does? You know, usually in the short term, hardware can take it, care of it, but in the long term, you, you follow the, you know, just development cycles. Software tends to win uh, in, in terms, so, you know, where are we with, you know, where functionality is, you know, what differentiates what you offer compared to others in the market? Absolutely. So, uh, so we see a significant trend in terms of the the, the role of a coprocessor to the x86 or evolving ARM-based servers, right? And the workloads are are shifting rapidly. You know, with the need for higher performance, more efficiency in the server, you need coprocessors. So we make essentially uh, coprocessors that accelerate networking, and that sits next to a x86 on a smart NIC. Uh, the the uh, important differentiation we have is that we are able to pack a lot of cores on a very small form factor hardware device, as many as 120 cores that are optimized for networking. And by able, able to do that, we're able to deliver very high performance at the lowest cost and power. Okay. Can you speak to us just, the, you know, what, what's the use case for that? You know, we talk about, you know, scale and performance. Who are your, your, your primary customers with this? Is this kind of broad spectrum or, you know, certain industries or use cases that pop out? Sure. So we have three core market segments that we go after, right? One is the NFV infrastructure market, where we see a lot of OpenStack use, for example. Uh, we also have the traditional cloud data center pr providers uh, who are looking at accelerating using SmartNix. And lastly, the security market. That's kind of been our legacy mar uh, uh, market that we have grown up with, uh, with security kind of moving away from appliances to more distributed security. Um, those are our key three market segments that we go after. The irony is in this world of cloud, uh, hardware still matters, right? Not only does the hardware, like you're packing a huge number of cores into the, into a NIC, so that hardware matters, but, uh, but one of the reasons that it matters now is because of the rise of this latest generation of solid state storage, right? You, right? People are driving more and more I.O. Do you see, what are the trends that you're seeing in terms of uh, storage I.O. and I.O. in general in the, in the data center? Absolutely. So I think the the the, uh, the the large data centers of the world they, they showed the way in terms of how to do storage, especially with SSDs, or what they call disaggregated storage, essentially being able to use the storage on each server and being able to aggregate those together into a pool of uh, uh, storage resources. And it's been called hyperconverged. I think uh, companies like Nutanix have found a lot of uh, success in that market. What I believe is going to happen uh, in the next phase is, is hyperconvergence 2.0, where 
where we're going to go beyond security, which essentially addressed uh, you know, TCO and being able to do more with less. But the next level would be uh, hyperconvergence around security, where you'd have distributed security in all servers and also telemetry. Uh, so basically, you have storage appliances going away with hyperconvergence 1.0. But with the next generation of hyperconvergence, we'd see the security appliances and the uh, the uh, monitoring appliances sort of going away and becoming all integrated in the server infrastructure to allow for better service levels and uh, scalability. So what's the relationship between distributed security and then the need for more bandwidth at the backplane? Absolutely. So, so when you move uh, security into the server, the processing requirements in the server goes up. And typically, you know, with all security processing, you know, it's, it's a lot of what is called flow processing or match action processing. And those are typically not suitable for a general purpose server like the ARM or the x86. So that's where you need specialized co-processors, kind of like the world of GPUs uh, doing well in the artificial intelligence uh, applications. I think in this, the same example here, when you have security, telemetry, et cetera, being done in, in each server, uh, you need special purpose processing to do that at the lowest cost and power. Uh, Sujal, so you, you mentioned that you've got solutions into the public clouds. Are those you know, the, the big hyperscale guys? Is it service providers? I'm, I'm curious if you could give a little yeah, color there. Yeah, so these there. are both tier one and tier two um, uh, service providers in, in the, in the uh, cloud market, uh, as well as the telco service providers, more in the NFB side. But we see a common theme here uh, in terms of being wanting to do security and uh, things like telemetry. Telemetry is becoming a hot topic. Uh, something called in-band telemetry that uh, we've been, we're actually demonstrating it at our booth uh, and also speaking about with some of our partners at the show, such as with Mirantis, Red Hat, and Juniper, uh, where uh, doing all of these uh, on, a, on, on each server is, is becoming uh, a, a requirement. Uh, when I, when I hear you talk, I, I think about, here at OpenStack, we're talking about the hybrid or multi-cloud world, uh, and especially something like security and telemetry. I need to handle my data center, I need to handle the public cloud, and even when I start to get into that IoT edge environment, you know, we know that the service area for attack uh, you know, just gets orders of magnitude larger, therefore we need security that can span across those. Uh, are you touching all of those pieces? Maybe give us a little bit of uh, you know, dive Absolutely. into Absolutely, I think a yeah. great example is uh, DDoS. Right, distributed uh, you know, denial of service attacks. And uh, today, you know, you have these kind of attacks hap happening from computers, right? Uh, look at the environment where you have IOTs, right? Uh, you know, you have tons and tons of small devices that can be hacked and could flood attacks into the data center. Uh, look at the autonomous car or self-driving car phenomena where each car is equivalent to about 2,500 internet users, right? So the, the number of users is going to scale so rapidly and the amount of attacks that could that could be proliferated from these kind of devices is going to be so high that people are looking at moving DDoS from the perimeter of the network to each server. And that's a, a great example that we're working with with a large uh, service provider. I'm kind of curious how uh, these systems take advantage of your technology. Uh, you know, I can see it, some of it being transparent, like if you just want to jam more bits through the, through the system, then that should be pretty transparent to the app and maybe even to the, the, the data plane and, the, and the, the virtual switches. But I'm guessing also there are probably some um, uh, API or other software driven ways of, of doing like to say, hey, not only do I want you to jam more bits through there, but I want to do some packet inspection or I want to do some massaging or some QoS or I'm not sure what all what all these smart NICs do. So is there is there is that is my is my model uh, correct? Is that kind of the different ways of interacting you, with your you're technology? You're hitting a great point, a great question by the way, thank you. So so the, the world has evolved from very custom ways of doing things or proprietary ways of doing things to more standard ways of doing things. And one thing that has kind of standardized, sort of, so to say, the data plane that does all of these functions that you mentioned, uh, uh, things like security or ACL rules or virtualization, is Open V Switch is a great example uh, of, of, uh, of a data plane that has kind of standardized how you do things. Um, and, and there are a lot of new open source projects that are happening in the Linux Foundation, uh, such as BPP, for example. Uh, so each of these uh, standardize the way you do it, and then it becomes easier for vendors like us 
to implement a standard data plane and then work with the Linux kernel community in getting all of those things upstreamed, which we are working on. And then uh, having the Red Hats of the world actually incorporate those into their distribution. So that way, the, the deployment model becomes much easier, right? And uh, you know, one of the topics of discussion with Red Hat that we presented today was exactly that, as to how do you make these kind of scales, uh, scalability with for security and telemetry be, be more easily accessible to users through uh, a Red Hat distribution, for example. So, Joe, can you give us a little bit of just a, an overview of the sessions that, that Netronome has here at the show, uh, and you know, w what are the challenges that people are coming to that they're excited to meet with your company about? Absolutely. So, we uh, we presented one session at Mirantis. So, Mirantis, as you know, is uh, is a huge OpenStack uh, player. Uh, with with Mirantis, uh, we presented exactly the same the, the the problem statement that I was talking about. So, when you try to do security with OpenStack. Uh, whether it's stateless or stateful, uh, your performance, uh, you know, kind of tanks uh, when you uh, apply a lot of security policies, for example, on a per server basis that you can do with OpenStack. Uh, so, so when you use a smart NIC, you essentially return a lot of the CPU cores to the revenue generating applications, right? So essentially, uh, operators are able to make more per server, uh, make more money per server. Uh, that's the, a sense of uh, what what the value is. So, so that was the topic with uh, Mirantis, uh, who uses actually a, a open Contrail uh, virtual router data plane uh, in their solution. Right. Uh, we also have uh, presented with Juniper, uh, which was also based. Speaking of open Contrail. Open, yeah. yeah. So Juniper is uh, is another version of Contrail. So we're presenting a very similar product, but that's with the commercial product from Juniper. Um, and then uh, we have uh, just today presented with Red Hat. Uh, and Red Hat is based on Red Hat's OpenStack and their Open vSwitch based uh, products, uh, where, uh, of course, we are upstreaming a lot of these uh, code bits that I talked about. Uh, but the value proposition is, is uniform across all of these vendors, which is uh, when you do storage, uh, sorry, se security and telemetry and, and, and virtualization, et, et cetera, in a distributed way across all of your servers and get rid of your appliances. You get better scale, uh, but to, to achieve the, the efficiencies in the server, you need a smart NIC, such as ours. I'm curious, is, your, is the technology usually applied then at the per server level? Is there a rack scale component too that needs to be there? Or it's, it's on a per server basis. So it's the use cases like any other uh, traditional NIC that no. you would use. Uh, so so it's, it's, it looks and feels like uh, any other NIC. Except that there is more uh, more processing cores in, in the in the hardware, and there is more software involved. But again, uh, all of these software gets tightly integrated into the the, the OS vendors. Uh, operating system and then the OpenStack environment. Gotcha. Well, I guess you can never be too rich, too thin, or have too much bandwidth. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sujal, uh, share with our audience any interesting conversation you had or you know other takeaways you want people to have from the OpenStack Summit. Absolutely. So without naming uh, specific customer names, you know, we had uh, uh, one large um, uh, data center service provider in Europe come in, and uh, their big pain point was latency. Uh, latency going from the VM uh, on one server to uh, another server. And and that's a huge pain point, and the request was to be able to reduce that by 10x at least, right? And we were able to do that. Uh, so that's one uh, use case uh, that we have seen. The other is, again, uh, related to, relates to telemetry. You know, how uh, this is a, a telco service provider, right? So as they go into 5G uh, and they have to service many different applications such as uh, what they call network slices. You know, one slice servicing the, the uh, autonomous car uh, applications, another slice uh, managing the video distribution, let's say with uh, something like Netflix, video streaming, and another one servicing the cell phone. Uh, uh, you know, something like a phone like this where the data requirements are not as high as from a you know, TV sitting in your home. Uh, so they need different kinds of SLA for each of these services. How do they slice and dice the network and how are they able to actually assess uh, the, the, the rogue VM, so to say, that might cause performance to go down and affect SLAs? Uh, telemetry, or what is called in-band telemetry, is a huge requirement uh, for those applications. 
So I'm giving you like two, two, two. One is a data center operator, you know, an infrastructure as a service, just one lower latency, and the other one is uh, is interest in telemetry. So, so Joel, final question I have for you. Look forward a little bit for us. You, you, you've got your strategy hat on, uh, Netronome, OpenStack in general. What, what would you expect to see uh, as we look throughout the year? Maybe if we're you know, sitting down with you uh, in Vancouver a year from now, uh, what, what do you hope that we as an industry and as a company have accomplished? Absolutely, I think uh, you know, you'd see uh, a lot of these uh, products, so to say, that enable seamless uh, integration of smart NICs uh, become available in a, on a broad basis. Uh, I think that's one thing I would see uh, happening in the next one year. The other big uh, event is, is the whole notion of hyperconvergence that I, 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 I talked about, right? I, I would see the notion of hyperconvergence move away from 1.0, just storage focus, to security and uh, telemetry with OpenStack kind of addressing that from a cloud orchestration perspective, and also with each of those requirements, software-defined networking, which is being able to evolve your networking data plane rapidly uh, in that in that run. Uh, these are all going to become uh, mainstream. Sujo right. Das, pleasure catching up with you. John and I will be back to do the wrap-up for day two. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE.